Last time on Game Grumps. Looks pretty Tronish. Yeah. Could be a data center. Yeah, key. I think it probably is. Click. Click. Effects. Yeah. I think I got the TV working. Oh, man. Uh-oh. That's not good. But there must be some kind of trick to it. A trick? What kind of trick? Oh, God. This killing game is being broadcast live to the entire world. Whoa, <laughs> really? What? That's it. It's the knife that person was holding. There's so, too many strange coincidences. What? That there was a knife and someone took it and then stabbed someone with it? How is that yeah, a coincidence pretty... and not just a series of events? Knife. <laughs> that's because it got set on fire and it threw water on it. You know that water puts out fire now, so that's pretty impressive. <laughs> That's a new little, new little thing to learn. Oh, hold on, I lost my microphone. Yeah, I see. Can a you trouble over there? Oh man. <laughs> oh. Oh, come on now. Hello. Hello. All right, we're good. Yeah. Hey, I'm Grump. I'm not so Grump. And we're the Game Grumps. Hello. Hello, and welcome back to Game Grumps. Yes. I just. Uh, I just ate pizza for the first time in like a year, and I feel like death. Yeah, it's the worst. I had pizza last night, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I, it was so, so good. Oh, yeah. And I I am absolutely filled with self-loathing right now. It's, it's one of those things where you just like, you just don't stop. Like you have, you get a slice and you're like, ah, oh, well, that was gone so quickly, I guess. <laughs> Should just have another. <laughs> I guess four more slices couldn't hurt. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's fine. I'll be all right. Uh, uh, we think everybody I'm thinks Kyoko's the dead body, but I don't think Kyoko's the dead body. But uh. yeah, I I feel like they wouldn't send her out like that. No. Although she did give you a note to read in the event of her death, which, as we know, is something characters love to do in this game before they die. Oh my God, that's so true. It could be. Yeah, what if I open it and she's not dead, and then I open it and it's like, yeah. I'm not dead, idiot. And it's like, <gasps> Well, not that they, yeah. Not that they give you a note, but that they say, like, if anything happens to me... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, oh. alright. I remember there were some chickens in the chicken coop. What? There's only four chickens. Is that why they made a big oh, deal about shit. saying there were five? Definitely. <laughs> I count four chickens, huh? Four? What's going on, Makoto? Oh, dude, Hero's gonna lose be so one of your fucking, fucking chickens. <laughs> he's gonna lose his mind when he finds out there's not five chickens anymore. <laughs> you know he's just gonna grab the sides of his head and scream like, "What? <laughs> yeah, four huh? chickens!" Oh, I'm glad you're here. Listen, do you remember how many chickens there were in here? Of course, there were precisely five. Yeah, right. Yeah, because he made a big deal like the cosmic uh, number in the universe. Right. Mm -hmm. What's wrong? Well, take a look. <laughs> There's only four chickens here now. We're one short. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I knew he'd take it really hard. It's <laughs> 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 so weird, I wonder when it disappeared. I was down here just before nighttime last night and there were definitely five chickens then. What? <laughs> what are we gonna do? Going from five to four could have an impact on the structure of the world. Oh my god. Yep, that's our hero. Yep. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. If even a single piece disappears, the entire world will remain unfinished. Ah. Uh, I did my You're best putting to- putting a lot of pressure on this chicken. I know. <laughs> I did my best to ignore Hero and focus on the problem at hand. My problem with my hands. Why did one of the chickens disappear? Did it cross the road? <laughs> Could it be related to the wow. gates? <laughs> uh, little, little buck buck. Chicken coop chickens. All right. Yep. Yeah. Little buck buck buck. All right, what do you got for me, Biakia? Good oh. time here, Makoto. I wanted to talk to you. Oh, talk? <laughs> what do you want to talk about? I was like, why do I have to follow up on that shit? Just say the next line. I'd like to hear your alibi. I don't know what an alibi is. Alibi? Correct. I'd love to hear where you were after nighttime began last night. Uh, felt passed out. Was with, yeah. Oh, well, I was sick, so I was asleep all night. But why are you asking about that now? And what's nighttime got to do with it? What's nighttime got to do with it? Naturally. What's night? What's nighttime but a secondhand emotion? <laughs> you, you know, the, the, the word... I think we might have talked about this once before. The, the, the lyrics in that song are, What's love got to do with it? What's love but a secondhand emotion? Um, but the way she sings it, I thought it was secondhandy. Uh, H-A-N-D-Y, motion. Handy motion? T, 
<laughs> ION and I was like handy motion <laughs> well, are you saying what I think you're saying Tina Turner <laughs> yeah it's a little handy motion up and down. Yeah, what's love but a second ha ha handy motion? Uh, isn't it obvious? This murder took place after nighttime. How can you know that for sure? Because just after nighttime began, I came to the garden and murdered somebody. <laughs> I was going around looking for everyone so I could tell them about Monokuma. I was like, anyone? Here Where is anyone? Hiro has been spending most of his time in the garden the last few days, so I figured he'd be here. And I can confirm that when I arrived last night, there were was no body here and five chickens. <laughs> so the murder could only have taken place. There were there were three wolves and five sheep. How did they get across the river from one side to the other? All three of the wolves were named Toby <laughs> at some point during nighttime after I left the garden. Mm. However, Toko, Hirohina, and I were in the gym together the entire night last night. What? Once I found Hiro in the garden, we immediately went to Toko and Hina's rooms to get them. At that point, we all went to the gym and began dismantling Monokuma. As a precaution, we made sure not to go anywhere alone. We even went to the bathroom in pairs. In other words, all four of us have airtight alibis. <laughs> the only ones who don't have alibis are me and Kyo- Oh, that's you. Oh. Me and Kyoko. That's you. And if the victim really is Kyoko... Then I'm the only one without an alibi! Also, when we went to go get Hina and Toko, we stopped by your room as well. But you never came to the door, so where precisely were you? I'm telling you the truth, I was in my room, but I was dead asleep. I had a fever, so... That's hardly an alibi. I know. But what the fuck do you want me to do? So, what now? You seem to be at quite the disadvantage here. I'm the only one without an alibi, so that's really bad, isn't it? Nice. Nice. Yaku, yeah, fuck yeah. What's up, Hina? Ow! Listen, Makoto! Do you remember how the body looked, you know, before it blew up? Uh, she had, yeah, she had pink hair, <laughs> if I remember right. No, it was in a mask. Oh, right. It was kind of wearing some kind of mask and big white coat. Also, there was a knife sticking out of the stomach and the area around it was stained with blood. Apparently, the wound had stopped bleeding, but the bo the blood on the body was still wet. Yaku said not to touch it to avoid getting all bloody, but for how much blood there was on the body, I didn't see any on the ground around it. Okay. Well, thanks. That's a big help. Um, do you want Captain Crunch? I think of getting also, Captain I've got another question. Yeah. If they put the... You you seem to suggest that the robe or whatever that person was wearing was placed on backwards. I don't um, think that it, it was even, like, on the body. I think it was just laying over. Yeah, it was just laid over. But it was laid over and then stabbed through. Yes. So that that's weird, too. Makes you kind of wonder if the person died first and then was stabbed afterwards mm -hmm. as a red herring. Oh. Uh, now that you- Now that you explain it, I totally remember how it looked! Well, having to talk about it like that helped me remember it a lot better too, so you helped as well, I guess. Nice. Nice. Body- boy, Yeah, look, that robe- look at the sleeve. Yeah. That- that robe is not on them. I'm telling you, man. Uh, oops, I already talked to her. Before the body exploded. No. Oh. It was wearing some kind of mask with big white coats and a knife sticking out of the stomach the area with a stain of blood. Apparently the wound stopped bleeding, but the body of the blood was still wet. But for how much blood there was in the body, I don't see any on the ground around it. Well, what the hey? That's a big help. Okay, bye. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. We're making a lot of progress here. It's 11 o'clock right now. Okay, I and? <laughs> Oh, well, I was just thinking about when we first found the body. Well, the body was found, huh? I should look back at what I did this morning to help me remember when that was. Monokuma's announcements woke me up at 7 o'clock as usual, and I headed for the dining hall pretty soon. Once I got there, I met up with Hina. That was right around 7.30. Yeah, it takes me a half hour to walk to the dining hall. Then when I headed to the gym where everyone else was waiting. Next, Toko went to get the pickaxe, and that's when she found the body. What time was it then? Man, 
Hmm. It has that much time really? That's like four hours. Now then, Toko, what time is it? Well, when I left the gym, it was just before nine o'clock, so it's probably nine on the dot now. That's right. It had to have been right around nine o'clock. Ah, now that you mention it, I think you're right. Well, you mentioned it. So I think we could say for sure that the body was found at 9 a.m. Okay, my job's done. Nah, I helped. That's a pretty small job. Nice. <laughs> when the body was found. All right. I, I think that's it for in here. Well, I guess I haven't talked to I Toko yet. I think so. Unless you did, you talk to Toko. I. Oh, I haven't examined the control box yet. Ah. Sprinkler system. This is the panel that controls the sprinklers. They're set to turn on at 7.30 every morning, and Monokuma said the time positively couldn't be changed. Huh? Hold hmm. on. The time positively was changed! So the sprinklers <laughs> turn on at 7.30 each morning, right? Then so the if, body should be soaked. Yeah, the sprinklers should have gotten it wet. Which would mean the murder must have taken place... Nice. This morning. Wow. Interesting. I think- well, Dingle I mean, dang. it has been like four hours, like, I don't know. I think I've checked everything I need to in this area, but I'm not done yet. There are other areas I need to check. Specifically, that fragment I found before. Fragment I found before. Fragment I found before. There's some, but somewhere I need to go in order to confirm my suspicions. And I still I need no to find idea. out more, but yeah, me neither. Uh, is that corpse really Kyoko? If that's true... Then was that also Kyoko who attacked me last night? I didn't, did they attack you? I don't they didn't stab you. Yeah. If I could find a uh, bit more about her, maybe I could answer that question. Kyoko was never the kind of person to talk about herself all that much. Maybe if I can get into her room, I'll be uh, able to find out more. But the key to her room... Is right here in my hand. <laughs> yeah, it's with Gakia, it'll simply... never give it up. I will simply limit your options. I can't allow you to engage in any further suspicious activity. What? Limit my options. Give, give me the key to your room. Um, no. I don't have a choice. I have to see if he'll let me borrow her room key. Ah, uh, yeah. Hey, uh, me, the person with no alibi, I'd like to go check out some evidence. Yeah. <laughs> and hey, with. um, Byaku Yaku? Hmm. If you do come up with an alibi, I'd be happy to hear it later at the class trial. Oh, no, it's not about that. You have the key to Kyoko's room, right? I was hoping I could borrow it. I'm afraid I can't take that risk. You're the prime suspect, after all. Then go uh. with him. Of course, if I were to go with you- oh. <laughs> if I were to go with you, that would be a different story. Perfect! <laughs> then... Will you go with me? Sorry, I have my own agenda to take care of. Find me again later and we'll see. Depending on my mood, I may go with you, or I may not. Well, at least he's honest. Wow, cool. <laughs> Come back yeah. later, huh? Alright, then in the meantime, I should look around somewhere else. Maybe I should check out... ...that one area. <laughs> they keep... They keep saying that one area. Um... But I'm gonna go to yeah, the... Yeah, I don't know what that is supposed to be the corner of. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. But I'm gonna go to the gym, because that's where the broken Monokuma is. Okay. If we're talking about like evidence. Bum 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 bum. Mm -hmm. Going to the gym mm -hmm. with Jim. Gonna eat my Jimmy's in the gym with Jim. Uh oh, okay. Oh, oh, there say, it is. Is it gone? Monokuma's laying dismantled on the floor, but I figured it wouldn't be here. You know? Oh, okay, so I just it was oh. the bomb. I, I it's the corner I of the bomb. I kinda thought it was the bomb, but. I just found something. What is it? It's... It's what? A bomb. There's one installed in every Monokuma robot, I'm sure. A b, -b, -b bomb That's <laughs> not what bombs look like. And that bomb went missing. There's no doubt about that. The fragments I found in the garden... No, there's... Yeah, I guess that's okay. part of the bomb. Okay, I've checked everything else I could think of. All that's left now is... Kyoko's room! I should head back to the garden and ask Byaku Yaku. Byaku Yaku Yakidi Nakanak? Would you accompany me to the garden? <laughs> Get my name right, asshole. Byaku Yaku Nakidi Nakanak. Byaku Yaku Nakidi Nakanak! 
Who is it? Who's there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you think you can you go think soon, Byakuya? Oh, you wanted to check out Kyoko's room, right? Very well. Let's go. Ah, wait for me! Uh, Pyakia walked off without a second glance and I hurried after him in our way to the dorms. Wait up, master! <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised uh, Toko would allow this. Yeah, right. Two men going on together. <laughs> Can't unlock it myself. I need to ask Pyakia. Hey, what's up, Pyakia? I'm so short. Well then, here we go. You might still be crouching. Pyakia, I don't think I can crouch. Yaki had took oh, out like the that. key and slid it into the keyhole, and then click. Click. And it's open. Looks like it. Thanks. <laughs> well, see ya. Okay. <laughs> now yeah. time to murder you, since I've got you alone. Yeah, you stay out there. A Kyoko's got a pink pillow. Oh, I'm so jealous. <laughs> so this is Kyoko's room. Let's Love come. what she's done with the place. It's more purple, really. There's something on the table. Duh! It's a woodblock decoration. Or is it a key? What? What's that? What purpose does it serve? I think it's probably a key. The lockers at those really traditional public bathhouses use them for their lockers. Oh. <laughs> the cherry blossom room. Yeah. I wouldn't know. I've never gone to a <laughs> public bathhouse. <laughs> I'm afraid I would offend people with my massive hog. <laughs> That doesn't really surprise me. It's hard to picture Byakuya doing something like that. But if it is a key, I think I might know what it unlocks. Really? What? Heart. <laughs> Unless I'm mistaken. I'm pretty sure I saw something in the dojo that this might go to. The dojo? Nice. What? what I saw something at the dojo that this might go to. <laughs> <laughs> so go, Kyoko. go slow to the dojo. Um, go, go. I guess I'm... Oh, I still haven't, like, looked at everything in the room yet. Um, bed. Here's her bed. I don't see anything interesting here, at least not as far as the case is concerned. Alright, cool. <laughs> Great. Dope. Just uh, the coolest. Okay. There's nothing else, right? It's just the surveillance camera and the The door. normal stuff, I think. Bathroom. Here's the bathroom. She might have certain articles hanging out to dry. I better not look inside. Right. She might be dead. Yeah, I mean, let's just let's go, I guess. Try to help her out, man. <laughs> Wait, I don't remember. Oh, oh, so the dojo is the cosplay room, right? Uh, cosplay room meaning where, where the cherry blossom trees were? Yeah, that's right here. Yeah, okay. I think so. Uh, oh, I can't. Why can't I go there? Oh, am I, like, restricted or whatever? I guess I gotta talk to Yeah. yeah. You wanted to come here, right? So what is it you're looking for? Nothing in particular, I just thought we might find some kind of clue here. A clue that might help us understand Kyoko. You can't be serious. That's why you made me take time out of my search to come here? S sorry Regardless, if you plan on poking around at random, you're doomed no matter how much time you take. Surely you have something more concrete. Something to give us more- some sort of direction here. Yeah, the key! Yeah. The key you just stole. More concrete. Wouldn't oh. want to go in- wouldn't want to go into the bathroom because we might see her bra hanging there, but let's steal her key! Yeah. <laughs> Earlier, Kyoko gave me something. Huh, what's this? Consider it a symbol of my determination. Don't open it yet. Only open it... if something ever happens to me. Or someone who might be me. <laughs> I'm sure I have it here somewhere. Found it! What's in the envelope? What's in the envelope? Kyoko gave it to me. She said if something ever happened, I should open it. Interesting. Does a corpse exploding count as something happening? <laughs> well, something certainly has happened. <laughs> yeah. So open it. Okay. I opened the envelope and looked inside. Inside was a single piece of paper. Under the sheets. What? Oh. That's all that was in there? Yeah, it looks like it. Under the sheets, what could it be? I a new I'll album look. from Ninja Sex Party. <laughs> yeah. Just I, I don't know what it could possibly mean! I'm gonna leave! <laughs> Do it. Uh, but something could be hidden under the bed sheets? Part of me didn't expect to find anything, but as I lifted up the sheets... What's <laughs> this? Found a crumpled up piece of paper. <gasps> it said, look in the envelope! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> I'm caught in a loop! <laughs> 
Mukuro Ikusaba? I see. It appears to be Mukuro Ikusaba's profile. Yeah, it looks like it. That's probably the other thing Kyoko stole when she snuck into the headmaster's room along with the key and other stuff. Ah, God, you're so annoying. Fine, I'll tell you. It was a key in blank. That's it. Mm. This must be the blank that Monokuma was talking about. Kyoko said a death without meaning was unappealing, and this is what she left behind. I don't have time for your sentimental indulgences. Hurry up and finish your search. Okay! I made an effort to pull myself together and look down at the profile sheet. Name, Mukuro Ikusaba. Sex, female. Definite asshole. Although small uh, for her the age. soldier. Right, the ultimate soldier. That's Although small for her age, she was a military specialist trained in every weapon type imaginable. She showed an interest in the military from childhood and soon found herself completely absorbed in it. In elementary school, she won a survival game tournament and began writing for military magazines. The ultimate soldier. Just before entering middle school, the while, ultimate she, magazine. <laughs> while she and her family were on vacation in Europe, she disappeared. The story of a young Japanese girl being kidnapped quickly took over Japanese media outlets. An intense international investigation turned up no information and she was never found. However, she reappeared in Japan three years later alone and completely unannounced. She revealed that she had joined a mercenary group known as Fenrir for those three years. She insisted that she hadn't been kidnapped, that she'd received battle training on her own vol volition. However, she never revealed why she decided to return home when she did. Nice. Yeah, nice. Huh. The ultimate soldier. A mercenary group. This doesn't feel real. The world I grew up in, it's like a completely different dimension. Then again, I'm just trapped in a murder school. It's like one's yeah. non-fiction and the other's sci-fi. There's no way even to compare the two. That's how different this is. That's what how... That was how I saw things as just an ordinary person. But then... <laughs> You, Biak is just looking at you while all of your thoughts jumble up. That's what, that's what was how it was how. <laughs> I never imagined I would hear the name Fenrir in a place like this. Huh? You recognize it? The Fenrir Mercenary Corps, the ultimate core, <laughs> is a collection of battle-crazed warmongers. The ultimate type of monger. But they do have their uses, and they always get the job done. That's worth remembering. This is the all ultimate form of recollection. <laughs> <laughs> this is all part of a world totally removed from the one I live in. I have to say, I'm intrigued. Every rumor I've heard says that Fenrir has already. <gasps> Whoa! I feel like our hero is becoming a bit player, and a bit player is becoming our hero. Oh, it's you. Hmm? What have you got in your pretty little hand there? Uh oh, you found her profile. So what if we did? Don't freak out on me, I'm not gonna hold it against you or anything. And in case you're wondering, I don't hold it against Kyoko either, even though she stole it and hit it. After all, there's no rule against stealing, is there? But who I can't forgive is Miss Ogami, who broke the rules and busted into the headmaster's room. Maybe I'll drag her corpse out here and slush it up and devour it. Bears are omnivorous, omnivorous, Wait, you know. Who's Miss Ogami? Uh, Sakura. Is that Toko? Sakura. Oh, Sakura. Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. Are rule violations really so unforgivable? You're quite adamant about those regulations of yours. Of course I am. Proper school life is built on the dedication to organization and order. Which is why even I, as the school headmaster, have to follow the regulations myself. Oh, so you're saying you have to follow your own rules as well? Of course. Absolutely. I can't have you complaining about how unfair it all is, now can I? In fact, on the subject of fairness, would you like to know something else interesting? I interesting? It's about the one writing all the rules. They're actually one of the participants in this killing game. Oh, crap. I don't think I ever told you how many participants there actually were, did I? I was thinking I could probably clarify that. When you all first got together in the main hall way back when, there were 15 people there, right? God, look at how alive everyone is. I know. I think that first meeting may have led to a little misunderstanding among you all. Us all. Uh, misunderstanding? Are you saying? That's right. There weren't actually 15 of you. The total number of students, students taking part in the killing game was actually 16! 16! 16. dude. Then! 
<laughs> Take a bow for the Rice Krispies. <laughs> How many times have we seen that scene? <laughs> it's the best. The 16th student, Mukuro Ikusaba. She's part of the school life, so the one making all the regulations is... Why? Hmm? Did you say something? Why are you telling us this? Oh, well, because... Like I told you, this killing game is desperately popular. You wouldn't believe the ratings! And since we've got so many viewers now, I wanted to make sure everyone was on the same page. I don't want to wake up to a hurricane of complaints and hate mail, you know? Yes, indeed. Makes sense. Okay, that's all you get for now. Oh, actually, I do have some revenge to get, so I have an extra bonus for you. Revenge? I want to get back at that sneaky Miss Carrie Gary, so I'm going to share a little secret with you. So, seriously? You know how she wears those stupid gloves day in, day out all the time? Well, don't tell anyone I told you, but she wears them to cover a bunch of hideous scars that she doesn't want anyone to see. Ooh, so she might still be alive. Yeah, what? That, that corpse didn't have scars. Okay, now that's all you get. Ah, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> nice. All right, sweet. Damn, Kyoko wears those gloves to cover up a bunch of scars. Wait, so on the back of her hand, the tattoo. Wait, but no, Monokuma specifically said they were scars, right? And that's why Kyoko wears those gloves to hide the scars, which means that Monokuma thinks tattoos are scars. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Those fake nails on the corpse. Are you thinking about Kyoko again? <laughs> oh, I can't help Don't myself. Work. Huh? <laughs> Forget about her. What matters right now is uncovering Monokuma's trap. His trap? God must really have hated you to make you so dull. <laughs> Don't you remember what Monokuma just told us? He said there were 16 students, right? Which means Mukuro was a student here. Obviously, Monokuma was trying to tell us that Mukuro is the one creating the rules to the game. He wasn't trying to tell us, he literally told us. Yeah. But why would he tell us that? And why now? He said he wanted to make things clear so there wouldn't be any complaints later. But the mere fact that he said that proves that Mukuro is connected to this case. That's why Monokuma revealed the existence of a 16th student. He needs to make our investigation fair. Mukuro is related to the case. Perhaps she's the one who killed Kyoko. What? Or she's the one. I... Yakya, are you stupid? That I'm telling you, he's the dumbest to... character in the entire game. Why would we have to have a class trial, wouldn't it? If she's a student and she killed someone, that would make her part of the school killing game. Or, she's dead and we discovered her body and that's why we have to have the trial. <laughs> Mukuro is the killer? She killed Kyoko? Anyone should be able to come to that conclusion, don't you think? In fact, that's exactly what I thought when the investigation first began. Oh, is it? But, based on what Monokuma just told us, I've changed my mind. Mukuro Ikuba Ikusaba isn't the culprit. Huh? What makes you say that? We thought Mukuro, the ultimate despair, was the mastermind's true identity. But if that's true, Monokuma's behavior makes no sense. Why would the mastermind go out of their way to reveal themselves to us? That's a good point. Or not. I don't know. Mukuro giving us information that would raise questions about her would be bold, to say the least. It makes more sense, then, to assume that Mukuro isn't the culprit. So that's the trap. The victim? Okay. Fine. They want us to suspect Mukra and, be and come to the wrong conclusion. That's what makes sense to me. The way you say it, it definitely does seem possible, but if that's really true, if Mukuro isn't the killer, then who is? Well then, I believe our work here is finished. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's move on. I'm sure there are other places in need of investigation. I should find out if that key and the dojo really are connected. Well, are you coming? I'm not that excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're here already. Give it a shot. Uh, all right, great. Um, I guess I'll take a walk. Wee 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 wee. You pan over Biaki is just tearing it up on like <laughs> an electric guitar. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> what happened? What happened? Are we fine? What happened? <laughs> or something like that.
Hello! <laughs> We're back. Yeah, so just in case this was strange, it just suddenly cut off and there's probably, hopefully the editor did something that was like, or something like that. Um, my power went out. Uh, and luckily, I'm recording audio on a laptop, and I'm recording the game on uh, a computer with a UPS backup, but I didn't think to plug the computer with Ronpa on it to the UPS backup. Um, so... We lost all the progress we had, and I had to get back to this point. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's an hour later, but it's fine. Whatever. Yeah, it's, uh, it's gonna be good. So let's check the locker. We did okay. it. Good. There are wooden lockers here. They use wood block keys just like the, at those super traditional public bathhouses. It looks like the key we found in Kyoko's room really does go to one of these lockers. It looked much bigger in the room. <laughs> Makoto. Do you see the locker fart hest to the right? That's, that's the only, the only one, one that, that- Oops, that's- Oh, that's sorry, the- That's the only one that doesn't have a key in it at the moment. I'll speak for myself, <laughs> thank you. You understand what that means, right? Oh my god, is he like the dumbest person on planet Earth? I think he's just a dick. <laughs> I should probably use the key we found in the locker, right? Well, just try it. It's like, see what happens. He points out the obvious and then expects me to know when he's not going to point out the obvious. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like, yeah, fucking it's really idiot. Weird. All right, I took out the wood block key and inserted it into the locker's metal lock and click. The locker eagerly accepted the key and it opened. It's like, well, thank you. Whoa. There are, there are arrows in here. It looks like 10 arrows in total. <laughs> Why is that significant? <laughs> They look like they're made of titanium, as opposed to unobtainium from <laughs> Avatar. That's hard to obtain, which means they're quite strong despite how thin they are. Just like me. Of course, <laughs> without a bow, they're nothing but strong little sticks. Strong. Sticks. <laughs> nice. <laughs> what? Alright. I'm conjuring a demon. Strong sticks. A bowl of kicks. <laughs> Uh, oh, there's, you, some, there's something else inside the locker. It's a wadded up ball of duct tape. I wonder what this was used for. Probably removing it's cat got hair. It's blood on it. Oh, is that a blood stain? If it is, that means it must surely be related to the case. This duct tape is related to the case somehow? But how could it possibly be involved? Okay, I think that's all the locker has to offer for now. <laughs> Emotionally. I'll give it five bucks for its troubles. Dot dot dot. Is there something wrong? It's very odd, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, I mean all the murders and everything. Oh, right. The way- <laughs> The locker was hiding items that were clearly related to the case. What do you mean? But how did- how did the key to the locker wind up in the victim's room? Why? Or perhaps... Byakuya? <laughs> Forget it. What? Come on, we need to continue on to the next location. Stop being so coy, Byakuya. Just say what you want to fucking say. There's only five of us yeah. left. Huh? What location? There's still something we need to look into. We need to do more research on Fenrir. Fenrir? You mean the mercenary group that Mukuro was a part of? But how are we supposed to find out about that? Isn't it obvious? Where in this school would you go to do research on something? Research. The cafeteria. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Are you talking about the archive? That's right. The archive has all kinds of info that the general public doesn't have access to. We only have so much time before the trial begins. Let's hurry. <laughs> Grab my hand. Let us skip. Yeah. We'll cover more ground if we skip together. <laughs> it's like fast walking. I believe there was a file related to Fenrir somewhere over here. Yaki seemed to know the archive like the back of his hand and went straight to his shelf in the back. Of his hand. <laughs> ah, here we go. He quickly returned with a file in hand in his hand. <laughs> I guess I'll talk to him? Yeah. Take a look at this. Um, I have no idea what it says. What language is this? It's Byakin. <laughs> How did you make it all the way to high school without learning a single word of French? Uh, I'm pretty sure most high schoolers can't speak French. Except in France, probably. Dude, 
<laughs> well, <whatever. laughs> I, I, I'll read it for you, but I expect you to repay your debt a hundred times over. A hundred times? You mean a hundred kisses? Isn't that kind Ooh, of <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's not even the correct words in French. <laughs> Fenrir is an elite fighting unit based out of the Middle East. Unlike military contractors, they are a fierce group of soldiers who engage in direct combat. Ugh. They claim that a single member is equivalent to an entire company of regular soldiers. Oh. Just like Fenrir, the Wolf of Ragnarok, Lesser known sequel to The Wolf of Wall Street, their mere presence is enough to strike fear into any enemy. They have been involved in countless military battles and operations, most of which are highly classified. However, some time ago, they completely ceased all activity. I, so, is, is Makoto like reading the book, but Byakuya is reading it out loud to him over his shoulder? That's correct. He's probably looking at the pictures. Okay. At present, their continued existence cannot be confirmed. But yes, in order to make sense, their positions should probably be reversed. <laughs> yeah. There are unconfirmed rumors that the key members, or reports that the key members of the group were all neutralized. Oh. Like someone dropped some tums on them. <laughs> rumors indicate that they were killed to keep them from revealing the many state secrets they'd acquired. Like how many licks it takes to get to the Tootsie Roll Center of a Tootsie Pop. But Rhett and Link did that, it was like 700. <laughs> Some, however, believe there was mounting internal tension within the group, and they simply imploded. <gasps> that would kill them, all right. <laughs> what is it? This all just sounds like some kind of alternate reality. Uh, it's augmented reality? <laughs> well, it isn't. This is our reality. The only reality. These people are part of our world. <laughs> Their battlefields aren't much different from our lives here. An unpredictable, unimaginable world. And what would I give if I could live out of these waters? That's what makes it all so exciting. Exciting definitely isn't the word I would use. So did anything jump out at you? This may be your last opportunity to learn about Fenrir. I don't know. And I don't care, to be honest. No, that you mentioned it. The report said something about where the name Fenrir comes from, right? The Lord of wolf. the Rings, I would guess. Yeah. Says the- it's That's the wolf of Ragnarok. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Speaking of which, <laughs> would you like to know something interesting- You speak French? <laughs> <laughs> would you like to know something interesting related to that? Uh... No. <laughs> to show that they're a member of the team, each soldier that joins the squad <laughs> would get a tattoo representing Fenrir somewhere on their body, like the back of their hand, for instance. <laughs> what? They got a tattoo of Fenrir? <sighs> that sounds completely unfamiliar to me. WAIT! Could that mean... Nice. Uh-huh. Ding dong bing bong. Ding dong bing bong. I think it's trial time. Is it? What? Yeah, baby. Why would he ding dong bing bong us? Silent, and yet it constantly assaults us organisms. Aaron? The Earth. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. He, well, she's, he's talking. It That's oh. Little by little until the end. You should really think about that. Anyway, okay. it's time to begin. Yeah. Class trial. Oh, fudge. So, please meet up in the <laughs> Oh universe. my god. And I guess we'll do that. Next time on Game Next Rose. time on Game <laughs> oh, Yeah, next time on Game Rose. Uh, uh then the time has come all right. for next time. Well, hell yeah, then. I guess we'll see you, um, next time on Game Grumps, and it'll be fun, and we'll all kiss. Class Trial 5, baby! We're- mm. we're- we're doing this! We're really getting there now. Do we really have all the research we need? I feel like the- I don't know anything. If we don't, well, you better fucking shoot your, uh, trash bullets or whatever. Truth bullets. <laughs> uh... <laughs> And get that shit right, homie. Trash bullets, I love it. All right, uh, <laughs> all right. Then we'll we'll solve the the mystery of the trial in five episodes. Okay, cool. Later, puppies. Bye. Bye. That's what I'm saying, girl.